Hey guys, in this video I'm going to take a look at Synthmaster 1, which is a new synthesizer plugin from KV331 Audio. Now Synthmaster 1, counterintuitively, is the follow-up to Synthmaster 2, so it's like a cut-down version. There's a few features that have been taken away, um, but there's a lot of stuff that's still left in there. Um, and to me it looks like, if you actually look at the GUI here, it looks like it's up to compete with um, Silent and uh, Hive, uh, Spire, stuff like that. Now what we've got here is, um, there's a pair of oscillators, there's one over on the left here and one over on the right, a couple of filters, multi-mode filters, and you've got a couple of LFOs and four modulation envelopes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're just going to have a quick look at the layout and, and what kind of features you've got here. It's not going to be a massively in-depth tutorial because um, KV331 has got some of those up already. So starting with the oscillators, they're both the same, so I'm just going to take a look at one. You've got the standard VA waveform, sine triangle, square, sawtooth, and a pulse. You've also got a load of sample waveforms. Um, I'm assuming this is an Andromeda, base station, SEM, and Oberheim, and then some weird stuff at the bottom. I don't really know what these are. Uh, random UHF? No idea. Oh, hang on, let's try. Kissing fish. <laughs> So they're like snapshots of uh, wavetables. Um, you've also got some actual wavetables as well. So if we choose wavetable one here, <clears throat> what it allows you to do is morph between two wavetables. So you can do that kind of thing in Serum and Massive. And you can do it in Zebra as well. If you create your own waveforms in Zebra, you can do that kind of thing in there as well. So there's tons and tons and tons of stuff you can do in the, in the oscillators here. And the oscillators have also got uh, oscillator algorithms built in. So if we go back to a standard sawtooth, this box here describes your oscillator algorithm. And what that is, it's like having an effect baked into the oscillator. So with this one, we've got a low pass filter. That's a very steep low pass filter you've got several filters to choose from. So you can, we've got low pass, high pass, low shelf, high shelf, band pass and band stop. But you've also got the bend algorithms that you've got in something like Massive. So that'll manipulate the shape of the waveform. So if we choose bend plus, you can, if you have a look at this display here, it's quite small, but you can kind of see the waveform being manipulated. You've also got oscillator sync built into the oscillators themselves, so you don't have to attach it to another oscillator. So let's just pick one of those. So you can do all your oscillator sync kind of sounds. And then finally, there's some weird kind of bit crushy pulse stuff at the bottom as well. Uh, hang on, where did that go? Bit crushing. So there's tons you can do even before you start delving into the rest of the synth, which I find quite appealing. So let's put that back to low pass. Moving over to the sub oscillator. Now, usually with a sub oscillator, you're gonna get a couple of waveforms and the ability to drop it an octave or two to sit under your main oscillator. But Synthmaster 1 does it differently, which is good. Because you can choose from multiple different kinds of waveforms for the sub oscillator as well. So if we just pick one of the FM, I don't know what all of these are. Let's turn the main oscillator down. So that is in fact your sub oscillator, which you can tune. So you're not just restricted to normal VA waveforms. But, but wait, there's more, because you can also set the sub oscillator to work in different modes as well. So if we set the main oscillator to a sine wave and the sub to a sine wave, with this box here, you can create amplitude modulation, ring modulation, phase modulation, and frequency modulation from the sub oscillator. So if we turn on frequency modulation or FM, and then just give this some volume. So you can start creating some kind of FM sounds there as well, but you can choose other kinds of waveform. I mean, usually FM is gonna be sine waves, or historically it was, but you can choose any waveform you want here. Let's 
just do something. Let's do some ring mod. So plenty to be getting on with there as well. Um, finally, let me just initialize that preset. Finally, we've got the Unison engine as well, which I really like the sound of the Unison in this. I think this kind of sounds like a virus. Not not the um, the whole synth itself, because obviously the virus, you've got the, the filters and all the other bits and pieces, the effects that go along with it. But the Unison itself sounds really nice on this. So let's set it to, you've got 16 voice Unison as well, which is quite high. Give it 11 voices. I'm just gonna drop the volume a bit. Put detune up, detune width. And then I'm gonna set the oscillator to free running because otherwise you get that horrible phasing sound. And then this little box here, it doesn't really tell you what it does unless you look at the display, but this is the detune curve. So that's a tighter detune and looser. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Right, I'm gonna set back to initialize. Let's move down to the filter. Uh, filter's a multi-mode filter. You've got um, ladders, diode ladders, state variable, and byte variations. Uh, the filter on this sounds quite beefy. I really like the way this filter sounds. Um, let me just switch that on. By default, the input gain's turned up, which I'm not particularly a fan of, but there you go. So that's the standard low pass. Uh, in fact, let's just compare with 24 pole. 24 dB, pardon me. So that's a standard one. And then state variable. Oh, we've only got a 12 dB. So they all sound different. So there's there's tons of potential for sculpting there as well. Um, just a quick note, this acid button here, this on, this couples the resonance to the cutoff at low cutoff values. So that allows the filter to work like a, a 303 filter. And then on the ladder and ladder diodes, the boost um, button will give you some makeup gain for high resonance because if you, let me just set the volume back to normal. I'll go back to this. When you turn the resonance up, you're going to lose a bit of volume. And that boost button just gives you that volume back again. So that's useful. Okay, coming down to the modulation section, you've got two LFOs. They're fairly standard LFOs. We don't need to spend too much time with those. Um, what I do like is you can switch it between bipolar and not bipolar. So that means that the LFO is going to work on the zero position of your modulation destination so it will go up and down instead of just up and then back to the um, initial value if that makes sense so you've got four modulation envelopes um, a couple of them are hardwired to certain destinations already uh, so you can set lfo values and modulation envelope values to the filter directly from the filter itself which is useful so you can pick between lfo one and two um, but other than that, you can come down to the mod matrix here. You've got two pages of mod matrix. Uh, where you've got six slots in each. So you can assign it to other parameters as well. And the modulation destinations are very, very comprehensive. So you can send the modulation sources almost anywhere, apart from some of the, the modulation envelope values themselves, but I think they're working on that. So... One little note about the modulation matrix. If you choose a source here, so let's say I pick modulation wheel as my mod source. So coming back to the keyboard, you see I can just moving my mod wheel on my MIDI controller here. The way to assign modulation is if I wanted to assign this to filter cutoff, I click on the modulation destination or target, drag it up here and then let go and it's automatically assigned. And once I give the destination a value, you can see there's a ring on the outside of the destination or the, the target here moving. So that's similar to Massive as well. The one thing I would say is that the 
the rings don't stay on the outside of the modulation sources once you change the um, sorry the destinations once you once you change the mod source. So if I click on mod envelope one, that disappears. You can see the amp envelope one is hardwired to the volume here, but as as soon as I change them that ring actually disappears. So it's quite hard to keep track of it unless you've got the mod matrix window open, but they might be able to do something with that later as well. So if I, if I just go back to keyboard here, you can see that's a time assigned to filter cutoff. Okay, let's go back to initialize preset again. Um, let's move over to the effects. Um, there's, there's a ton of effects that you can apply to um, Synth Master 1. And you can also, if I just click one hold it down and drag it you can drag and drop the order of the effects as well one thing i didn't know when i was doing some um, factory content is i didn't know that if you right click on one of these tabs you can choose some different kinds of effects as well so for example the phaser was hidden so now the phaser set at the top there. and something else to note as well which might not be in the manual yet is that you can the, currently the phaser and the chorus and perhaps a couple of other of the effects don't have a mix knob yet but the way to get around that is if you come down to the mod matrix let me just zero this again set my modulation source as uh, where is it it is in other yeah set the modulation source as constant and what you can then do is you can pick a phaser as a mod destination and here we'll find the effect mix so you can control the effect mix from the mod matrix if you want to so now We've got. Hang on. And now this this dial here will control the effect mix. So yeah, that becomes your effect mix knob now. So overall, there's, there's, there's plenty that we can do with Synth Master 1. Um, I really like the way that the oscillators are set up. I like the way the filters sound. And it gives you a little bit more scope than using um, a standard VA plugin like uh, Silent or Spy, the ones I mentioned earlier. Um, just going over to our presets here. Just go through a couple of ones I did for the factory content. So you can do the standard 303. <laughs> I think most of the presets I've assigned the mod wheel to do something. So it's a really nice sounding filter actually, really beefy. Um, what else have we done here? Something interesting. So with the, um, with the wavetable oscillators we can do kind of an, an fm style uh, like a piano sound this is i've called this one yan's hammer because it sounds like an old yan hammer uh, preset that used to use a lot i think it was from a dx7 <laughs> excuse my hand fisted playing i'm trying to operate the mouse and the piano at the same time uh, we can do some, I think I did some self-oscillating filter sounds here for this, like an ambient piano sound. But it does uh, kind of plucky... xylophone I don't know if you can hear that I'm, I'm actually using velocity a lot with filters and um, other parameters in the synth as well the velocity curves on this I know it sounds like a really boring thing but sometimes synths they don't they don't really get this right but this this synth has got it right so you can be really expressive with with playing it not just you know slapping notes in a um, piano roll. Blade Runner. What else have we got? Might 
nice plucky sounds here. Frozen forest, I think this is a... This one actually, um, it, it shows you the speed of the envelopes. If we go back to the synth page, I'm using mod envelope two here to um, alter the pitch. If we go into the mod matrix, you can see what I've done. Uh, where are we? Yeah. So mod envelope two is modulating the pitch of oscillator one, which is that really plucky sound you can hear at the beginning of this. And one thing I would say about the modulation envelopes is that you can change the curve of the attack, decay and release, which is very powerful because it allows you to go from an exponential to a linear to a logarithmic curve just by dragging upwards and downwards here. So that's a very useful feature as well. Uh, what else have I done here? Uh, oh yeah, you can get some really cool pads out of this as well. Because, you can, because you've got so many modulation targets, there's lots of things you can do to evolve sound over time. So you can get some really cool, massive pad sounds. Uh, there's another one I do. It's also pretty good at these uh, kind of cinematic, bra I think they're called Bram. That kind of thing. And then good old analog. So it does that fairly well as well. Broken nonsense, it does well. But it also does good old fashioned epic. kind of stuff well as well and then you know it's trancey stuff so yeah overall i think this is this is an awesome synth i'm not sure how much it's going to be yet but it's out in about a week and a half i think february 27th um there's a couple of pals of mine that are doing factory content for us as well, Ein Zahev and Arxen and a couple of other people. So I would take a look at this because this is going to be a really good bread and butter synth for somebody who wants a bit more than Silent or Spire, you know, the standard VA stuff. This does a bit more than that. If I've missed anything out, if there's anything you see on the UI here that you want to ask questions about, just pop a question down below. This is just supposed to be a short video and I think I've already run over what I thought I was going to do. So um, yeah, thanks a lot.